Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. I could have sworn I had seen a video like this, or this... I, I didn't. I checked on my channel. Nothing came up. I don't have a preemptive like on it. General knowledge. Awesome. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Let's go. My name's Connor. If you're new, hi. I am from New England. Better England. JK. JK. Did I just say that? Ah. Uh, what would a United States of Europe look like? I love getting uh, opinions on this. <laughs> um, I think the United States of America was kind of uh, not as much of a sure thing when it started. And I think United, the European countries are far more different from each other than American colonies were. Well, I don't know enough. Uh, l let's learn, shall we? Link to the original video from General Knowledge, top of the description, Discord below that. Love to have you. Europe is a continent. It's made up of 44 Max. countries, give or take. It depends who you ask. And within that continent, there is an organization Close that above. unites some of them. 27, to be precise. The European Union. The European Union, or the EU, is a political and economic union. But its member states maintain both political and economic sovereignty to a great extent. It's often been described as a sui generis political entity without precedent or comparison in the world, with the characteristics of both a federal and a confederation. Some people would argue that this is a perfect balance. You get the best of both worlds, but others would argue the opposite, that the EU needs reform. Some say to further increase the internal authority of its members, reducing EU reach, and others argue that EU authority needs to, in fact, increase. I think what? Reform. Some say to further increase the internal authority of its members, reducing EU reach, and others argue that EU authority needs to, in fact, increase. Don't the first and last points um, contradict the second point? I think this is a good way to differentiate the opinions of people towards the concept of a European Union in one of four groups. First, those who are fully against it and want to dissolve it, returning complete authority to each country like the UK Brexit supporters did. Two, those who are content with the status quo and want nothing to change. Okay, I definitely haven't uh, seen this video. That's good because I don't remember any of this. Brexit supporters did. Two, those who are content with the status quo and want nothing to change. Then, the people who want to move further towards a confederation of fully independent states which cooperate and are integrated in some minor ways, perhaps only through the Council of Europe, an organization founded in 1949 which has 46 member states, all of Europe save Belarus, and its purpose is to uphold human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Europe. Guys, this is the biggest problem I see if, if you were to uh, go towards more of a United States of Europe, is that bureaucratic bulk bs is already extremely um it's necessary I i'm not saying that one side or the other is causing the no it's just the nature of a democracy right and but the bureaucratic sort of stops and it is is already super difficult and 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 challenging and convoluted in the united states where we all speak the same language we're extremely similar culturally extremely europe 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 you guys have been fighting for like three two thousand years like you guys have so many different languages different cultures very different political ideologies uh, we we do two over here but uh, i think if if bureaucracy is super slow in the united states oh my god how is it going to function at all without a little bit of like uh authoritarianism or something how is it going to function in the eu i i don't understand how that would ever work europe not to be confused purpose is to uphold does that make sense rights democracy and the rule of law in europe not to be confused with the european council which is a eu body made up of 
rule of law in Europe. So, Belarus, just, 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 just have some books. Organization founded in 1949, which has 46 member states, all of Europe save Belarus, and its purpose is to uphold human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Europe. Not to be confused with the European Council, which is an EU body made up of heads of state of EU members. They should really have more different names for these because it can get a little confusing. And finally, those who want to move towards further integration via federalism, with increased authority of a European central or federal government in similarity to what exists in the US. Essentially create- Guys, number four is just in like, does anyone think that's actually possible? I'm, I'm super curious. Central or federal government in similarity to what exists in the US. Essentially create- What your reasoning would United be. United States of Europe. Before we move on with the video, a quick word from sponsor and friend of the channel. Please use their links and promo codes, guys. Please, please, if you're interested. NordVPN, the best VPN service which I myself use. The reasons why I choose it over other VPNs are simple. Speed and security. Do you know when you use a VPN and it takes ages to load a page? If it even does, that doesn't happen with NordVPN. When you're online, people, internet providers, companies, pretty much everyone might have access to what you do and your information. That's not okay. And third parties should not have have access to your details. NordVPN prevents that and goes the extra mile with their associated tools like NordPass, a password manager, and NordLocker, which provides encryption for your files, keeping everything you own and use online safe. Other than speed and protection, Nord is great at precisely what a VPN does, like accessing geo-restricted content in streaming services, for instance. Go to nordvpn.com slash general knowledge to get a two-year plan, plus one free month with a huge discount, as well as 30 day money back guarantee and now go, let's go, go. get back to the video so in this video i want to go into that hypothetical what would a united states of europe look like what would change compared to the current european union and what would that mean for the continent and its countries first the basics what would this federation be called would it maintain its name of the european union during the american internal conflict the northern states referred to themselves as the union opposed to the confederacy an interesting parallel here the name could of course change to the literal United States of Europe, but given that the United States of America already exists, it's unlikely even European Federalists would want to have such a similar name, trying to find something more original. Although, Winston Churchill- How about just Europe? But then- that's the continent, so... ...actually used the term mind. United States of Europe in a speech delivered... Although, Winston Churchill actually used the term United States of Europe in a speech delivered on the 19th of September of 1946. He stated, We must build a kind of United States of Europe. In this way only will hundreds of millions be able to regain the simple joys and hopes which make life worth living. But despite using this term, Churchill had a cautious approach, the unionist position, to European integration compared to the approach that continental countries had known as the Federalist position. The Federalists advocated full integration with a constitution, while the Unionists advocated for only a consultative body. It's interesting that this far back, this exact discussion was already being had. But assuming the United States of Europe wouldn't be a viable name, perhaps the Federal or Federated States of Europe would be an option. And what about the flag? The EU flag is United a European with 12 golden stars. Federation. The flag has 12 stars because the number 12 is apparently the symbol of completeness and unity. It has nothing to do with the number of members. I honestly don't get this. I think this is one of the things the US flag has always done well throughout time. The fact that it changes and gains a star with each additional member I think contributes to each state feeling like it truly belongs to that union. Like the flag actually represents them because their star is in it. I think that that is pretty cool actually i've always never been a like i don't think the united states flag i just mean like aesthetically okay i don't think it's great i don't think it's terrible but uh i never thought about that i guess it is pretty unique in that it depends if, if if a state goes away you get rid of a of a star i'm over explaining what he just said but yeah interesting so never EU thought of that to transform into a fully federal state or even if it doesn't then this change should be done the 12 stars becoming 27 with each of them representing a member state but of course a fully new flag could be created with some yeah other design. i don't like and it what would this mean on the ground what personally would change for the continent and its countries with all the instability that we see today in the united states of america and the different policies that each state follows almost going into diplomatic conflict 
conflict with others, you would think that a new wave of secessions could take place. That would be an interesting topic for a video, what if the US separated again? But one of the reasons why I think this could never happen is very simple, their military. The fact that the United States have a single national military makes it so that each member state would not be able to wage war on another, nor would they be able to defend themselves in the case of independence, essentially fully guaranteeing the existence of the Union. Yeah, and uh, I was talking about this. Was it my dad or something? Like, the possibility of a civil war, again, I bring back communication, okay? Instant communication. Instant communication, biggest invention in human history, in my opinion, okay? Whatever it was, the ability... Because without instant communication, where you have, like, a month of travel time on horse or something, you have so much time to solidify, to to coerce, to, um, not coerce, not coerce, uh, like, like, plan stuff without the immediate knowledge of the, the, uh, the capital, Washington, D.C., right? And, uh, the, the military isn't nearly as powerful, but also it's just, ideas are, are spread, like, through the internet, through cell, tel uh, cell phones. There, there would be people all over the country with different views on, if, if, say, it was a similar uh, civil war split up of states. We have more states now, but um, it, it would be, like, it, it would just, it seems so much more unfeasible just because of the way that the country could catch on to it so quickly and then and then try and tamper it down. If the EU wants to move towards federalism, I think the first step would be to create a single European army, not one that existed in parallel to national ones, one very large army that would replace it. The current French president, Emmanuel Macron, has made this proposal, although his idea would be a common force made up of soldiers from each country, not a replacement single army for all of them together. The argument for it was that Europe couldn't rely on the US for its protection at a time when NATO wasn't in its best state. Current events have led to a re-strengthening of NATO, even with two new countries joining, and so the German and British argument against the European army at the time, that it would make no sense to have a parallel force to NATO, becomes valid again. But NATO works for a group of sovereign countries that are allied. If the purpose would be to move towards European federalism specifically, then I think a single European army would be essential. In terms of membership, I'm assuming this would just be the EU transitioning into a federal system, and so the members would be the current 27. I think it's unlikely for the UK to come back as it is. They left for more autonomy, so giving a central European government more authority would probably yeah, make that makes it no sense. less likely that they would join. This further loss of sovereignty upon joining would also perhaps make applicants like Turkey think twice before applying. Only if the benefits were tremendous would they do it. With the US, it was different. It was federal from the beginning, and even though states had a lot of autonomy anyway, they were willing to give away their sovereignty in order to gain their independence from the British, and then in order to be a part of a booming new nation. It's not the same for an independent Norway to today join a federal Europe than it was for an almost deserted and underdeveloped territory of North Dakota to do so. Economically, there would be another needed change. Out of the 27 EU members, only 19 use their single currency of the euro. I think it's about to become 20 as Croatia will join in 2023. But still, if federalism became a reality and the European Union essentially became its own single country, only having subnational member states, then I think it is mandatory that they would truly use a single currency. And so, the remaining seven countries that use their own currency would need to join the Eurozone as well. These countries today are Bulgaria, Czechia, Denmark, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Sweden. Regarding the internal market, I don't think much would change. There is already a common EU market. I think economics, save the currency, is in fact the thing in which the current model of the EU is furthest integrated. This makes sense because the origin of the EU was precisely the European coal and steel community. While peacekeeping was the objective, the means towards integration were always economic cooperation since the start. And the fact that it is the way in which countries are most integrated also makes sense because it's the most beneficial. The main obstacle that Brexit supporters faced was the loss of access to the incredibly large and valuable European single market. Perhaps if the EU was reformed and other integration mechanisms presented more advantages for its members, then they would be more eager to further integrate even if that meant a loss of some sovereignty.
was reformed and other integration mechanisms presented more advantages for its members, then they would be more eager to further integrate, even if that meant a loss of some sovereignty. Another key question is, should there be a United States of Europe? What would the territorial organization look like? If each of the member countries became subnational states, with Europe itself becoming the single country, then there would arguably be no need to maintain the current national borders, and a reorganization of the territory could take place, perhaps even strategically, to to dissolve national see this is one of the things i get it it's it's a it's a 13 minute video but it, it, that it's saying that it <laughs> a single country, then there would arguably be no need to maintain the current national borders and a reorganization of the like there'd be no uh, need to maintain national borders territory could take place perhaps even strategically uh, and reorganization could take place strategically like to dissolve and then like boom like that, that the that, i feel like that would take like a century of debating of like if ever right and so like that that is some i get it's hypothetical okay but still it's it's based in 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 reality really <laughs> it's like oh god it's just a large project. And a reorganization of the territory could take place, perhaps even strategically, to dissolve national movements who wanted independence by separating them into several regions. In his book, Eurotopia, the Dutch beer brewer and pro-European political activist, Freddy Eineken, proposed a United States of Europe. And again, if I'm a country who's like, okay, we want to get in board with this, and you're taking a giant risk and like, Okay, you, you separate your country into a, a few states that already kind of feel more independent. What if the EU doesn't work out in 50 years and it starts to crumble? Well, now your whole country is completely separated and you, and you very well probably can't take it all under control again. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm, I'm, I know this is a hypothetical, but still... Jesus Christ, the more I think about it, this is never going to happen, in my opinion. And I would love to hear, uh, if you think I'm wrong, would love to hear your reasoning. European territory would be divided into 50 smaller states. One could argue that this would actually allow for regionalisms to be accommodated, granting further local autonomy to places that have independence movements, such as Catalonia or Scotland. But a key issue arises, this was written in 1992, not only including the now gone United Kingdom, but also other countries that are not EU members, like Switzerland, Norway, or Serbia. A new adaptation of this map was made in 2016, which we can see here. When it comes to freedom of movement, the EU already has that, even extending it to other non-EU members with the Schengen area, so nothing would change in that regard. I have to say that I myself have a difficult time making up my mind on whether I would support this or not. While I'm all for European integration, I do think it's important for each country to maintain some sovereignty and not let its fate be decided entirely by others, for smaller countries especially. Although when you look at the US, you see how limited the federal government truly is, and how each state has so much sovereignty and self-rule so perhaps if a similar model was followed for europe it wouldn't have that many negative aspects it is so it is like compare it like it is so incredibly different the the european the uh the british colonies the american 13 american colonies they had a common enemy the british right they, themselves you know they wanted to get rid of it you know the taxes and then they came together and realized you know you know in the in the congresses and continental congress or whatever that they need to be, it would be best for all of them to be one country. They already all speak English. They have British origins, British style governments. Um, of course, some support slavery more than others, which will be a giant conflict 70 years late in the 1660s, or sorry, the, the 1860s. And then gradually over time, the same people, same language, same culture, another state another state another state another state another another and it, and it gradually became and now everyone flies american flags every state flies american flags every state when something like 9 11 happens it's like we're american but with europe it's like you have all of these extremely old countries all very different from each other already already exist already have boundaries that you want to then form into something like the united states that to me is orders of magnitude more difficult complicated than 
uh, the way the U.S. was created and now is a thing. So does that make sense? And some people seem to agree. In 2017, a poll indicated that 30% of Germans were in support of this idea. At the time, proposed by German SPD leader Martin Schulz. In France, 28% were also in favor. This was a somewhat limited poll. Only seven countries were part of it, as we can see on this graph. But still, only in two of them do the people against make up more than half of the sample. A larger set of polls between 2012 and 2014 show even more support for this, with only just over a handful of countries being more against Against this idea then they are in favor of it. The recent rebirth of NATO and increasing favorability towards it and the EU itself due to very unfortunate current events could be a good opportunity for reform and see like like places like like for instance if you were to create a united Nordic country right they have a lot of shared history. It would still be very difficult, all right? Still be very difficult. But that, that but you can see where the uh, uh, popularity majority do. Like, and I don't blame them. If okay, I, this is not me from an American perspective. Well, um, it's always from. I'm saying that if I'm a country, okay, and I, like say I'm I'm Sweden or I, I'm Denmark, I'm Finland or whatever. Yeah. Ah, the hesitancy I would have would be enormous. That that's all I have to say. I guess further integration. Just and EU leaders can thought I had a good thing to say, but words didn't to happen. Support this good opportunity for reform and further integration. And EU leaders continue to support this. Just this year, Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi stated that we need a pragmatic federalism that encompasses all areas affected by ongoing transformations from the economy to energy to security. We must go beyond the principle of unanimity, which gives rise to an intergovernmental logic of clashing vetoes and move towards decisions taken by a qualified majority, arguing that for former treaties that regulate the way the EU works were made after World War II and the Cold War. And now that we face a new reality, new treaties must be made. A pretty solid logic, in my opinion, because I think the EU does need to change in some ways. And if it were to become a federal system, it definitely would need to. A direct election of the EU leader would, I think, be essential. Further legislative power would have to be given to the European Parliament, and the European Commission would have to become a real European government itself, with full executive power over all the member states. In similarity to the US US federal administration. National leaders could perhaps become a type of senators representing their nations and maybe having a decisive say in policy and legislative decisions. So that is what might happen. I just want to ask how, you know, I'm, I'm saying, how do you do it? Policy. It's a great idea, but it's almost like you're, you're not even looking at the obstacles. Legislative decisions. So that is what might happen if the European Union became a federal state, becoming the United States of Europe or the federal states of Europe. What the main changes would be when it comes to the organization itself. Maybe I'm being too pessimistic. Would have for its member states. Would you want to see this happen or not? Which of those four groups I first mentioned would you consider yourself a part of? Are you against the EU existing? Do you like it as it is? Or do you think it should be reformed either into a more consultative organism with more sovereignty for member countries or into a fully federal system where one single European country exists and countries would now become member states? Uh, I have no preference. Um, I'd say whatever Europe wants to do. Um... I know it's probably, I know that question he's asking is directed more towards people who would be in it, you know, in Europe and be affected by it. But over here, do not care. Do not, not that I don't care. Obviously, it's, it's Europe. It's important. I'm saying I would have no ill will in any direction, you know, just figure it out. Um, you need to experiment for yourself and, uh, yeah, so I definitely don't have a uh, answer to him there. I, I, you know, I like Europe, and uh, I think they're very competent. And yeah, just I'm saying nothing right now. <laughs> Hope you guys are all doing well. Would really appreciate uh, your comments, especially on videos like these. And um, I hope I didn't sound too confident or too pessimistic. I'm just one person.
not very well educated in all of this stuff giving my opinions okay so i like to do i like to learn and you guys in the comments really help me do that i uh, hope you're all doing well i really do and i'll see you next video all right bye guys